We're on the air. I know that. Hang on. I was a little late getting to the show. Oh, yeah. What else is new, right? Okay, so we have a Guillermo Next 155. A strap to go with it. And then we have, hang on, this over here someplace. Then I have a Diarmid Starfire. Of course, is the uh, Diarmid copy of a Guild Starfire. Oh, let's strike him up. And uh, put that over here. with a strap, and let's see if this one shows up. There's a lot of blue in here, I don't know. Oh, I forgot one, sorry. Uh, and I've got the new monster. Shows up. Yeah. And uh, if I put this case over here, and uh, turn on this amp here, and get this plugged in before it warms up. I think I got everything going here. Um, I don't know if I hooked everything up, you know, I just, I got four pedals on the floor and they're all hooked together and well, that worked. Um, I'm almost ready to play the Tom's guitar show thing. Promise is promise. But I gotta turn this amp down.
they call me Guitar Tom because I'm often seen with a guitar. And they call me on the phone. They ask me, they say, hey, man, what's your show about? I say, well, it's about an hour. It's about guitars, guitar players, guitar playing, all things guitaristic. So uh, if you're watching the show, you know the drill. If you want to call me on the phone, ask me a question about you know, guitars, guitar players, guitar playing, all things guitaristic, how to play your guitar, what kind of guitar is right for you, the care and feeding of your guitar. Yeah, you can't hear that. Huh. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. We're having technical difficulties. Okay, okay, all right, okay. Uh, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah. What kind of guitar is right for you? You want to talk about a related topic like a sitar, the cithara, the lute, wood, vihuela, banjos, barrel likes, bazookis, bajos, sextos, tiples, cavaquinhos. Ukuleles, banjo lalies, you know, saxophones, sack butts, trombones, tromba marinas, bandoras, bandolims, bandolar, band, anyway, band instruments, I don't know, ocarinas, accordions, clarinets, clavinets, harmoniums, harps or harpsichords, harmonicas, you know, keep it clean, this is a family show. Sorry, man. I, uh. I got really ambitious, you know, uh, this show, and I, uh, you know, kind of got excited about five o'clock, and I had to pack all this stuff up, and um, my Bob would know, because last week we, uh, I got this guitar on my way to the, uh, the last Tom's Guitar Show special, uh, where I, I guess I played my synthesizer guitar. I picked this one up, I had to take it home too, and, you know, I, I walked in and I, uh, with two guitars, I left with one guitar, came back with two, you know. And, uh, but, uh, but Laura was upstairs at her desk, you know, and I, so I went up and said, I did a terrible thing. And I thought she thought maybe, you know, I ran over as a college kid with my car or something like that or whatever, you know, but <laughs> one would think she would know by now. Yeah. She said, you bought another guitar, but I've been trying to get this guitar for 10 months. I thought it was a little more green it's kind of more like a light blue, I think, but I really kind of like it. It's also kind of, it has three P90 pickups, but it had terrible buzz. Terrible hum, and it still hums at home. So I got a, uh, it's kind of lopsided there, but it's a, uh, a hum debugger, an electro harmonics hum debugger made in New York City. Um, it's an electro harmonics, harmonics, which is uh, the same company that made my uh, Holiest Grail, which I'm playing through for reverb right now. So it's, um, it's a hum debugger. And the problem with this guitar is it, it tends to have, it's, it has three P90 pickups, which is one of the reasons I wanted to get it. I wanted the obnoxious color and the big hollow body, but I wanted the three P90s and the five position switch. And, uh, you know, it's not an excellent guitar. It's, it's a pretty good guitar for just cheap, you know. It's, it's Dane. It used to be an American company. Now it's kind of like made in China. But anyway, um, but it has the pickups, you see. And I, I wanted this... Uh, sound so I got the guitar I uh, uh, so I took it home but anyway it had the terrible buzz so I got the the, the uh, hum debugger because it goes hum like it, it picks up fluorescent lights and any kind of interference and and it was really bothering me but then I went yesterday and I'm, I'm borrowing this but I guess I'm gonna have to buy it uh, but it's a hum debugger is like a dream come true for me because I have a number of guitars that you know, more old-fashioned guitars with single coil pickups tend to hum so this Reduces the hum. I don't hear any hum. Yeah. It's going through my tube amp. It likes, it likes my tube amp. So yeah, a little bit of hum with a single coil boat. Just a little bit. Anyway, that's my story. So I'm going to play this one for a while, and maybe I'll play the Red Star Fire, and then maybe I'll play the, uh, the Blonde X-155 back here. Thank you. 
Anyway, I'm happy. It gives me a thrill. I don't really hurt anybody very much, you know. I'm good for commerce. So, uh, 
Actually, what it is is I, uh, well, it's, just, it's redistribution of money. It, goes, it stirs around and around and around. So. And of course, as always, some of it goes to China. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about this, uh, like the thing is, like I would probably take off this pick guard because it seems to get in the way, but I'm starting to get used to it, and the pick guard doesn't really seem necessary, this is just screwed on and it's elevated a little bit, you can elevate it more so you can like rest your, your hand when you use a pick, but I don't normally use a pick, and when I do use a pick, I don't, I don't need that there, I mean. Now, I could be rude and say, like, I don't need training wheels on my bicycle, but I don't actually have a bicycle right now, so, you know. And if I did, though, I probably wouldn't put training wheels on it. I'm trying to explain this to my uh, my boss over there at Tuscan Moon, you know, Warren, and why I would want to take the pick guard off, or why I don't want a pick guard. And I said, do you want a straw for your wine? And he got it immediately. See, they have fine wine there. At, uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> So that's my Let's see what this does. So on the floor here, I don't know if anybody's got a camera on it or is somebody do the switching, but on the floor here I have a uh, course the hum debugger over there. Uh, yeah, so this hum debugger over here is on a sideways, I, uh, uh, but I only have to push that button once. Here I have the holiest grail, which is electroharmonics, and it uh, does a really pretty reverb sound. And it does, it's a reverb unit. It does all kinds of reverbs, all kinds of things you can do with it. You can do everything from, uh, let me bypass this one. I can do uh, like this uh, overly, over reverb. Wait a second, I should push the bypass button off. Anyway, that's just one of many uh, reverbs. I, I put over here the uh, preset B, so I guess a nice, nice full, big, powerful, strong reverb. Beefs it up a bit. So I'll put that on bypass. There he is. That's the Holiest Grail by Electro Harmonics. I bought that for myself for my birthday. I, actually, my, my father gave me $300 for my birthday one year, and I, uh, oh, it's very kind of him, and I, uh, this was $299, so I bought it. Um, instead of putting it into savings, which would make more sense. Anyway, so that's the electro harmonics. Um, over here is a, D, D, a Digitech RP90, and it's a uh, it's on bypass mode. But and this has uh, this is kind of cheaper, you know. It's just a little chip in it somewhere, but it has all these different things you can do. See, this is a nice big full rich one. I can just fool around with presets a little bit and go down and get this like. Or something. Or, you know. Or. Or. I kind of like this one. Um. I think I like this number seven. I like 11 too. What was 11? I forget what 11 was. Um. But number seven, I can go ahead. My favorites. I like the big lush reverbs. You know. That's number twenty-four. 
This is number 23. And they sound different. Depends on what guitar you're playing, how they sound, but... Anyway, that's my um, Digitech R, R, uh, RP90. And then, of course, over here I have my uh, my loop station, my, my little RC2, my little old, uh, very simple little looper. They're bigger and better loopers, but I, you know. What can I say? I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't do complicated loops. Uh, something I should try to bring a... Someday, if I have plenty of time... I'm going to bring a whole bunch of different things and loop them all together with a mixer. So I'll play bass. Maybe I'll bring my drum machine. Uh... Hey, Bob, how many drummers does it take to screw in a light bulb? Oh, they got a machine for that now. So Sorry, that's the cruelest joke of all. Um... So I have... Um... Basically, with all my little loopers here, I can do a lot of things. But if I, if I, if I you know, looped other instruments into it, I could have... You know, I could have the guitar, the bass guitar, the drum machine, the synthesizer, the mandolin, whatever. So. Is next week our Christmas spectacular? Yeah, yeah. We should we should mention that from, often. From Uptown Bill's That's right. Coffee House. People should be there. There's going to be all Corner kinds South of stuff. Dubuque and Lafayette. Corner South Dubuque. Is it 730 or something? South Dubuque or something? I forget. Something like that. Corner South Dubuque and Lafayette. Block, down by the, block north of the county office building. That's right. Right by, down by the tracks. Yeah. Can't miss it. Just go down South Dubuque. There's a, a hotel. The Sheraton often has letters burned out, so you don't. It's not, it doesn't always spell Sheraton. But uh, if you uh, go south of the Sheraton Hotel in beautiful downtown Iowa City, a few blocks, you'll find yourself going down the hill by the tracks, and there's Uptown Bill's Coffee House. A cast of many of your students. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are going to be there, and some people who aren't my students and uh, readers. I hope you have something for us. It has to be it has to be very quick and concise, though. Uh, okay. I uh, because it's, it's, I don't know. I'm, tr I'm trying to put together my little. Uh, program already and I'm, I'm measuring the amount of time it takes for people to play various songs well so. maybe it'll be time to recycle my christmas joke that's short yeah well you could probably do a couple two or three jokes that they're short i mean that does that only takes like a minute you know so you can have like two minutes uh, uh, but uh i will see what i can come up with okay well there'll be various readings and there will be a little uh, uh little romanian boy uh andre young fellow there he's going to be uh, singing the he's going to be playing a romanian christmas carol with me i'll be his accompanist and then we're going to have a, a boy. I got to practice for this, but the, the ukulele orchestra is going to do uh, excerpts of the Nutcracker Suite. We're going to do a little medley of Nutcracker Suite songs. Um, so, good coffee, ice cream, desserts. Yeah. It's actually kind of hard on ukulele. Um, Have you done your mall appearance yet? I did my mall appearance on Saturday. Yeah. I played by the Christmas tree. I, I didn't dress up uh, very Christmassy, but I hung the lights on my uh, guitar. So I um, actually I wore my black, uh, a fairly good, uh, fairly new pair of black jeans. They weren't too faded, and I uh, black uh, t-shirt, uh, high quality. You know, it didn't have a pocket there, and. Uh, and, and my tux jacket. I had a tux, but when I had a cat who always wanted to sharpen his claws on the uh, pants. So now I just have it as a jacket. It looks kind of cool with jeans, but anyway. Um, it got hot, though. I had to hang up my jacket like before I even started. But I hung, I hung, I hung Christmas tree lights uh, on my guitar. So, And then I played, and little kids danced and stuff. And then after a while, everybody left, and so did I. You doing your usual weekend gig? I will. I, yeah, this is tis the season. I, I think I'm going to be a little late on Saturday because uh, I have a party to go to. But uh, perhaps we should explain what your usual weekend gig is. Oh yeah, well I play at Tuscan Moon in beautiful downtown Kelowna, right next to the uh, bakery. <laughs> so many things to do and see, like the cheese house and the bakery, my Kelowna. My Kelowna. I'm trying to work it up for it. Fine dining reservation recommended? Yeah, definitely reservations are recommended this time of year. But yeah, I'll be playing there right by the Christmas tree there, too. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Friday and Saturday night. I'm supposed to start, start at 6, so I'll be there by 
And I'll probably go down 930 or, or later. Um, That's the Tuscan Moon in Kelowna. Tuscan Moon in Kelowna, yeah. Be there. It's a good place to go. Everybody's so friendly, you know. Um, if Paula knows you, she'll hug you probably. But uh, anyway, personable people. And there's always Warren with the wine list. And he knows his, uh, he knows his Zinfandels. And uh, yeah, it's a fancy, it's a fancy, swanky joint. Well, it's really fancy for Kelowna. So... But yeah, I'll be there Friday and Saturday night, and uh, I think I'll be a little late on Saturday. I'm planning to uh, make an appearance at a party and uh, be sociable, and then I'll go there and play my gig. And and I'm also going to play there for New Year's Eve, and I would say if you want to go there for New Year's Eve, uh, Cologne is a place for lovers, I think, especially the Tuscan moon. So if you want to go there for New Year's Eve, I would make my reservations uh, last week, but you might still get in, because so, that's going to be a big one, but holiday season, you know. We go into reruns after the Christmas show? I think so. Yeah, I forget what the... Uh, I, I think we better find out when this closes. It probably says right there on that calendar. I will go ask. Yeah, well, look at the calendar. See, you find out because then we can, um, we can announce. It's a nice song, too. Well, what would happen if I put the two together? What would we end up with then? Wow. Turn it off. You know, I could switch guitars, I suppose. That's why I have this handy volume pedal. So I can switch guitars. All right. I'll put this one down. Let's see. Uh, what do you reckon, Mike? The red one or the natural colored one? What do you think? Red. Oh, okay, I'll play the red one. Yeah. He's a little... So this is uh, a... This is a replica, basically, of a 1962 uh, Guild Starfire, I believe. If I'm wrong, you can call the show and tell me, but I'm uh, assuming that's what this is. I'm just going to dust it off a little bit because I, I was playing it and uh, messing with it the other day, but actually two weeks ago. But uh, Got the straight skinny there, Bob? Yes, we, we don't close until the 23rd. Oh, good. We are closed from the 23rd until the 2nd. Well, there are people who may not get a chance. You see the 23rd to the 2nd? Yep. Okay. Yeah, but the uh, New Year's Eve is on the Tuesday, I think. So so we're going to be on hi- hiatus for a while. That's all right. Take a week off every now and then, a couple weeks off. But I was thinking that maybe if we had time after the, uh, after the uh, show... The, uh, the the week after the, the Christmas shebang, um, we could maybe have people who didn't have a chance to play or who couldn't make it. Come play here. Yeah, come play here on the regular show. But, uh, you know, maybe we should do something special. Chestnuts roasting. But if anybody wants to see us next week, Tuesday night, that's right. Down Bill's Coffee House. Actually, you can see us every week on TV, but if you want to see it live... You want to see it live? You can go to patv.tv or uh, YouTube on patv18, or you can go, go to tomsguitarshow.com, and you can watch uh, not just the latest episode, but you can go back quite a ways. Next week, you can see us in person. That's right. And I think that'd be a good thing to do. Because uh, some of the people who are going to be playing are... Gaining experience. Next week's going to be a pretty big week for me because I've got uh, I've got that show. I've got the uh, my students up at Coe College have to play in front of the jury, and I have to sit on that jury. I have to listen to every violin and every cello, uh, and uh, they give you little pieces of paper. You know, and you're supposed to mark stuff down. He's making a list and checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty and nice. I'm sorry. It's just my monitor went out. I don't know if that's a... It needs to be plugged in more. Or if, ah, that's, that was it. 
Yeah, it's on the air. It's just that the monitor wasn't plugged in very well. It was on. It's flickering. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's clear. It's still on the air. It's the monitor out here. We got loose wire. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, it's okay. Yeah, it's good. Thanks. <laughs> This is a actually rather nice guitar also. I'm not exactly sure what these pickups are. I should look up and find out what they are. They're DeArmond pickups. Um, the story of this guitar is it's a uh, uh, Fender bought Guild, and they closed the Guild factory in New Jersey. There are all kinds of different stories I've heard about it, like if people walked off and stuff like that. But people who worked for Guild went to Korea to the factory where they make court guitars, and they took all the equipment with them and taught the Koreans how to make hollow bodies. Um, you know, and uh, they did a really good job. I, I had this, I had a, a real Starfire, because I was going to try, um, I had a black uh, one that was made in, in New Jersey that was new, but it's been on the shelf for a while, had a, had a messed up pickup, and it was black, and, I, and it was uh, uh, quite a bit more expensive than this one. I got this one in a shop for I think $650 or something like that, which was like half of its retail price because it was... Uh, they couldn't seem to sell it or something. It was a shop that was uh, that eventually went out of business or was changed hands in Cedar Rapids. So I, I bought it actually when I really couldn't afford it. But it was one of those moments, you know. These are years. This is years ago. I might have messed it myself up that summer, you know, financially. But I've had it ever since, and I'm and I've gone through periods of playing it quite a bit. But it's a, it's a thinner hollow body. So it's not this thick. It's very heavy actually, because um, it has a big chunk of wood going through the top and a big chunk of maple, I guess, to stabilize it and it has these pickups which I, I don't actually know what they're called they're they're DeArmond pickups they're off the shelf they've probably been around for a while and basically nowadays the pickups are probably worth more than the guitar is because the pickups are uh, very important but the woodwork was well done I'd say the woodwork was just the same as the American you know woodwork was from an earlier one that I played this is all ancient history this all happened years ago but there's nothing about a guitar like the guitar is you know this guitar is some years old it's you know at least 10 years old, maybe 15 years old. And, uh, you know, it's fine. It's like... And no hum. So anyway, um, that's my story. Oh, yeah, it came with a whammy bar on it. I took it off and put this uh, trapeze tailpiece on it because it just kept going out of tune.
Anyway. This is sort of my prelude to it, really Tutti Frutti Tom's guitar show, because I also have a blue Stratocaster and a yellow Telecaster. And uh, I have a couple of shiny black guitars, and I have a white uh, Fender jazz bass. So I have black and white and green. And, you know, I actually have a... A really cheap green guitar, but it's kind of nasty. But now that I have the humbugger debugger, the hum debugger, I guess humbug is a as a Christmas thing. Right? Scrooge. <laughs> anyway, as well as my Christmas thing, I watch Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street and Scrooge, and uh, it's a wonderful life. But, uh, humbug. Anyway, this is a hum debugger. It's the opposite. What I'm doing here is a, um, if you play a chord, this is a D, ni a D minor 9. I find the right place to tap. You see, if you 12 frets above, since this is in uh, seventh position, so let's see. There we go. Because 7 plus uh, 12 is 17. No, 17, 19. Anyway. I, uh, as long as I tap it in the right place and have a light touch, I get the harmonics.
Richard Wooten was doing a demo on this on the uh, bass guitar. He was, uh, um, which is cool. It's easier to do on a bass guitar. But, I mean, what can I say? I already knew how to do it, though, because... Uh, it's just that if Victor Wooten agrees with me, then I feel better about myself. You see, because he's Victor Wooten, and I'm, I'm me. But uh, I play bass guitar also, but I've never played bass guitar with Victor Wooten. And uh, I guess he's never been in really in a big hurry to play guitar, bass guitar with me. So, uh, anyway. He, was, he came through town a while ago. I was thinking about Victor Wooten. He's a very good bass guitar player, very interesting, uh, innovative kind of guy. He's with Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones. I guess he's a Fleck Tone. Um, but uh, the thing is that outside of, like, you know, serious bass player circles, nobody's ever heard of him, which is kind of interesting. But, I mean, we have pop stars, you know. We have, uh, I don't know, who, who are pop stars now? We got, like... What's her name? I don't, I don't know. But people have pop stars, right? But they're usually singers, and the ones I'm more aware of are, are, are like women who are very flashy, and uh, have fancy clothes, and uh, look good and everything. But uh, maybe look a little too good. It's the video age. The video age, yeah. But uh, you know, like that. There, there were like, well, there were guitar heroes, I guess, and they made a game of it. And I guess the game has gone out of fashion because, because uh, <laughs> it's kind of silly. You know? But there were these, like, you know, you had your. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, and then you had your Eric Clapton, and a number of other people who were like guitar whizzes and everything like that. But I don't, I'm not aware of any guitar whizzes that are really, you know, well known. Um, and I ask people if they know any, you know, young people, and they, they don't even know what I'm talking about. They might have heard of Jimi Hendrix, but he's been dead for like 40 years. 60s, yeah. Yeah. 72, maybe? I think the early 70s. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think it was 72, or I think. Maybe I'm wrong. He was like under 30. But, but I mean, you know, he, may, he left, left an impression, but now who's, who's like, do they even want fancy guitar players now? I figure out who's directing. I can't remember if he was in the group the night I was reading off the 27 Club. Oh, yeah, I think he was in that group, yeah. Yeah, I think he, yeah. He would die at 27. <laughs> hey. You've made it past 27. That's right. I, uh, I would say that you know, for a guitar player, I have relatively clean living. Although for a classical guitarist, you know, if I were, I guess there's time, I mean, how can you call me a classical guitarist when I'm holding this red Starfire? But, you know, uh, as far as that's concerned, I'm, I'm, I live pretty loose, I suppose. But, but I mean, for like, well, for people who hold red guitars like this, I lived a long time. So, anyway. Uh. Well, I, I, I talked to some people who saw Roy Clark this year down at Riverside here. Mm -hmm. he, he was slowing down when we saw him a year or two ago, but they said he's, he's really lost his edge now. But he's got to be in his 80s by now. Yeah. I heard he was getting dementia or something like that. Or... I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I said, I know Glenn Campbell's been yeah, diagnosed Glenn with Alzheimer's. But... Yeah. I don't know about Roy. Roy Clark, when we saw him, he just had a hip replaced. Oh, well. There's a lot of that going around. Yeah. We were up at a spaghetti supper at the senior center one night, and half the people at the table had had a joint replacement. I said, you know you're at the senior center. I suppose. <laughs> well, I don't hang around there much uh, yet, but <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm uh, concerned about some of my... I'm concerned about my uh, my joints. I've been trying to tell people I teach up, you know, I've been teaching these classes and teaching these lessons up in the college there. And I people I ask them, well, how do you practice? And they, they they practice like you know like this, you know. And then I get there and they because they can't play very well because I, I I'm sitting in a straight back chair with a footrest. You see, like a uh, I got an uncomfortable little like aluminum and plastic chair with. A, they're working on the Chuck Berry duck walk. That's basically, but they're, they're they're sitting like this, you know, and then they and then they, they don't play very well. But then they, so, but I put them, you know, I have them. I'm sitting like this, you know. Actually, I was sitting there with that blue guitar that uh, that Dean Palomino back there, um, trying to impress everybody, and uh, 
you know, like the Chinese kid, you know, he thought it was nice and everything. wasn't really like, like wow, you know, the Americans. And, and my boss, he said, wow, what's that, you know? But uh, I guess, you know, anyway, but they all like play like this. And, I, and so I, I was playing like this and they had the footrest to put their foot up like classical guitarists. And then they couldn't like reach everything because they were used to playing like this, you know, with their thumb like that. And they say, like, so like, a, like you do that little minuet in G like, you know, so, like, if you play like this, that's a big reach. But up here, you know, like that, I mean, you know, it's easy. Like, but again, it's the video age. You got to worry about what you look like. That's right. Well. I don't really worry, worry about what I look like very much, Bob. It's, it's kind of a little late for that. And here you are, a TV star. That's right. Well, but like, like I always used to have the, the you know, the fairly low lighting. I uh, wear black, and I have a black backdrop. Now I've got the Tom's Guitar Show logo behind me, but, but um, you know, I have that. But, and I always have a bright colored guitar, like a, you know, a blonde or a Gyps- the Gypsy Kings or that, that X-155 that I'm going to pick up in about one minute. Um, like a, so you can see the brilliant bright guitar. And my fingers dancing across it, and then just you know, worrying about the rest yeah, of it. Well, when I first started coming, you'd, you'd always dress in black, and we had the black curtain behind you. Yeah, I thought, it's a head and hands. That's right. Now I should wear your, uh, I should wear your sweatshirt, yeah. and uh, yeah, and then just disappear. But I still think we could probably uh, key the chroma key so it matches that uh, that Dean guitar back there, and then we could like play like Three Stooges Pie Fights or something and, you know, on it. But if people don't understand that we have a green screen. They actually, we didn't paint the wall. Yeah, oh. this, this beautiful studio <laughs> is really just a green wall. That's right. Actually, it's a bit squalid in here when you think about it, but uh, <laughs> it is pretty squalid in here. But anyway... I like that sound. I like this. Um, I like this guitar. But that's not going to stop me from changing partners again. Yes. I'm uh, musically promiscuous. All right. This is a, a guitar that I also bought from the same shop in Cedar Rapids, which was you know, going out of business and changing hands. It was bought by another guitar shop, and a couple of years after that, it got flooded out. I don't think they ever recovered. But, uh, and it's really too bad and everything. But I got really good deals on this one and the other one. I got this one, and then I... Uh, um, I saw the other one, and something, in the red one, see, I, I bought this one, but I saw the red one, and something inside of me snapped. Uh, not really snapped, but I thought, you know, I really want that red Starfire, and I uh, really want it forever, and, uh, you know, so I bought it. This is a completely different voice. All three guitars are similar in some ways. They're big, fat, hollow bodies. But they're... Um, but they have different pick, so we pickups. Their, their bodies are different. There's like what's going on underneath, inside is different. And they all sound different. This is probably the best of the three, really. Um, Although I'm really, I'm very fond of all three. I like the, I know I like the new Aqua Dean quite a bit actually. I'm having a lot of fun with that. But this one's an old friend. I play this one pretty much every night on my uh, three nights a week at Verde, when that was still open and Iowa City was a a tapa lounge, which I I was telling uh, I call it a tapas lounge. Um, 
And I, I said that to, to uh, well, Donna, who's on the show frequently, she plays ukulele and sings. She thought I said a topless lounge, so I was playing in a topless lounge, so a top, a top, a small plates of food, little like hors d'oeuvres. So, so she didn't want to guest star at that show, huh? <laughs> No, it was, a, it was a mistake, but, uh, um, I mean, it was, it was tapas, tapas, little, we call them apps, appetizers, and uh, could be called hors d'oeuvres, which, hors d'oeuvres, or horse duvers, but, uh, Hardy like, Hars. Hardy Hars, yeah, yeah. Uh, Little, little, like, you know, you get, and I would see that there were these, these beautiful young women who were very thin with, uh, you know, put a lot of effort into their appearance, nice clothes, hair, makeup, and all this stuff, and they would have, like, a two jumbo shrimp with a, with a coconut on them, just wonderfully, you know, grilled shrimp with a coconut on them, because that's probably what all they were going to eat that day, you know, so they would, you know. So that was what I was playing for, and it was a great gig, though. Three nights a week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. I used to pl- bang away on this thing. Which is a... This is a great guitar. I was going to say it's a good guitar, but... It's a great guitar. Yeah, well, um, so I saw the other day one of Ben Crosby's houses is for sale. Oh. Huh. You, you can stay there for $3,000 a night, mm-hmm. or you can buy the place for three and a half million. I see. Or you could just stay home and read a book yeah. from the library for free. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> rent Holiday Inn and stay home and watch it. All right, there you go. Or check it out from the library yeah. for free. Huh. <laughs> I, uh. I'm um, I'm not a rich man. Um, 
No, I didn't, I didn't suppose any of us would be buying it. Yeah. Uh, well. You know, some of us are, uh, I mean, we live our lives and, and uh, our little lives and, uh, you know, we're the people, right? Huh? I pay taxes, you know, pay sales tax, road tax, income tax, carpet tax. Sorry. I, uh, anyway, I, I'm going to try to get this guitar in tune for the closeout. Um, probably need some more attention. I haven't, uh, I've been neglecting this one, but this has been my, my colorful hollow body show. And I can, uh, I'll probably do something like this again. But next week we have to get our Christmas program out of the way. That's it. Uptown Bill's Coffee House. That's right. Corner south of Buchan Lafayette. Down by the tracks. Free parking across the street at the university lot. They don't catch you. No, after 4.30 you can park there. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's great. Free parking. All right. And, uh, you know, you can have a cup of coffee. They have exotic soda pop down up there. And uh, these guys are all giving me the peace sign or else. Or, you know. um, anyway, there are, two, there are two minutes left in the show. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, but we're going to have – it should be kind of a fun little show, I think. And uh, it's also going to be a thrill for the people who are in it. And I, I would, you know, if I weren't, I'm going to be in the show, but if I, if I weren't going to be in the show, I think I'd go down just to hear the Nutcracker Suite played on ukuleles, in the ukulele orchestra. It'd be three ukuleles and a string bass. Feeling your own joke. Not, not to say you shouldn't watch it on TV, but if you can come on down and see it live. Come on down, means. fill up a seat, clap. Yeah. Especially for the, some of the kids. I got one kid's going to be doing a medley of Christmas carols on electric guitar. We're going to play electric guitars together. He's the kind of guy who wears his hat backwards and chews a lot of gum, you know. Our, our, our crack camera crew may pan the audience, and you can see yourself on TV. That's right. That's right. And I, I believe we're going to have a banjo lele duet doing a, a medley of Christmas carols. Also, uh, a woman with a banjo lele, and I have a ukulele tenor banjo. So it'll be two banjos, banjo leles, banjo ukuleles, tenor and uh, baritone playing a medley of Christmas carols. You don't see that every day. Anyway, upstairs. Uptown Bill's Coffee House next week, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, corner, corner of South Dubuque and Lafayette. It's kind of hard to talk and play guitar at the same time. Huh?